وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ولا يحيد عنها إلا غال فصلوات ربي وتسليماته عليه وعلى آله وصحابته ومن دعا بدعوته واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد فاز المتقون قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد من يسبقت الرغز سيستز يانجستز إن إسلام I remind myself and everyone to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to keep our duties to toward Allah Azza wa Jalla and to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is just around the corner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us barakah in Shaban and allow us to live and reach Ramadan with well-being and safety and security and afiyah. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Just before Ramadan, something in this khutbah I want to speak about and emphasize reflect together about and prepare ourselves to uh, embark on or to, to, to have as something essential in our preparation for the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is just a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins. It's not only a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies or makes mudaafa multiplication of our hasanat and good deeds. It is not just a month that has one night that is better than 1,000 months. There are so many things to speak about Ramadan. But there is something really amazing and a blessing, a great blessing for Allah Taala, which is that a month of Ramadan is a month of change. And for us to change, we need to reflect on ourselves, have some kind of self-examination, self-like uh, purification, to X-ray ourselves as slaves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to see or we check if we are fulfilling Allah's commandments or if we are missing or if we are committing any sins. So that's why I will talk about this inshallah ta'ala. I will talk about this before I start to speak about uh, the topic of the khutbah which I will just mention. I remember a story, one of the ulama he gave a nasiha to someone, like sincere advice that you, for one of the you know, youth that you have to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he was missing around, you know, he doesn't pray, you can't imagine making whatever, any sin that you can or you can't imagine. And subhanAllah, more than once the shaykh gave the advice to that youth. And then, um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, because the tests or the trials and tribulations for the believers are always good if they seek reward from Allah, if they are, have contentment and acceptance regarding whatever trial or test or uh, tribulation we have today. So that, you, that young one, he came uh, after a couple of years, unfortunately, he was disabled. And he said to the shaykh, I didn't come to Allah walking, I came to Allah on my back meaning um, he was disabled. So I, um, he didn't give much advice to, uh, to the shaykh initially. So, I, but whatever way or test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us through, as I mentioned, for those who have faith, is always good. <coughs> if whatever, for whatever we miss in this dunya, whatever it be things, materials, is nothing, as long as we have Allah with us in our favor. If you lose Allah, if someone loses Allah, he, lo he loses everything. If someone loses, uh, if someone finds Allah and has Allah, he has everything, even if he or she missed, you know, or lost any other material things. The other story is about one of the 
uh, someone he, he was severely you know, taking drugs or smoking whatsoever. And the Sheikh advised him, you know, quit these bad habits and these things. He didn't care, subhanAllah. Until he was, you know, he went to the doctor and the doctor diagnosed that he is going to have lung cancer. And then the doctor advised that if you don't stop these drugs or these things, so you will die. And then he stopped. He stopped immediately because he paid you know, attention, you know, he gave uh, credence, he gave you know, more trust to the advice of the doctor and he didn't care for the advice of the sheikh or the, the alim, someone who knows, has you know, knowledge, useful knowledge about Allah and the deen, about faith, iman. And subhanAllah, he stopped from what he was doing just because of the cancer that you know, was going to affect his lungs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all in the The point I want to make is, I introduced this quote by that the, the reality that we do have doctors in Islam in terms of doctors who know, who know about, they have experience, knowledge about the hearts, spiritual diseases. The spiritual diseases could be, or are, they are actually, they are more severe, they are more severe than the physical diseases. We seek refuge or protection, you know, from Allah for whatever disease, from, for whatever disease. But there are diseases that many of us don't care about as much we care for, you know, physical diseases. So these spiritual diseases are the diseases of the heart. The diseases that weaken the heart, corrupt the heart, corrupt our relationship with Allah. And of course, it must corrupt our relationship with others. If someone's relationship with Allah is not fixed, so I don't think that he is going to do well with the creation of Allah. This is an equation, or this is a reality uh, that we need to, uh, we, we will believe in. So one of our doctors, the scholars of Islam, they spoke about some of the dangers, some of the athar, some of the akhtar, some of the adra, some of the harms, some of the effects, ill effects. You know, bad consequences of sinning, of committing sins. And these sins, you know, they do affect, subhanAllah, they leave bad, negative, ill effect on everyone, on everything, subhanAllah, on the individual heart, on the individual uh, brain, on the individual body, on the individual soul. Everything in the body is affected by sinning, subhanAllah. Not only on the individual, on the cities, on the villages, on peoples, as societies, as communities and societies, as nations. And we are observing, you know, something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting humanity together. Almost in every single corner of the space of this of the globe, right? There is coronavirus. For us, we objectively, you know, analyze uh, what, uh, sp uh, spiritually, you know, uh, uh, analyze what is behind coronavirus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, there is no musibah calamity that, if, that if, uh, you know, affects or befalls, or befalls any one of you except by whatever your hands have given, meaning by your bad actions. al fasadu fil badi wal bah. You know, evil or corruption has emerged in the sea and in the land. By what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bima kasabat aydinas, by what the hands of people have here, meaning their bad actions and sins. So that's with regard to, uh, you know, the, what we can see on the, on the level of nations, on the level of the world, completely, the entire world is affected by coronavirus. While initially, it was just in one of the suburbs in China. I want to focus on this khutbah on some out of a long list to complete this list inshallah after Ramadan because next khutbah inshallah we'll speak about some of the preparation for, for the month of Ramadan some of the ahkam rulings that we do need to, before Ramadan comes upon us to understand some of the values, benefits, blessings some of the rulings what are the things that you know fix my siyah what are the things that invalidate our fasting right otherwise or uh, not for us to be losing any reward. I begin with some of the ill effects. I need everyone to focus because it's your property, it's my property. It's my, you know, uh, 
business, it's your business. <coughs> and whenever you attend a lecture or a workshop about deen, something we learn in Islam, Allah says, You will come to us alone. You will come to us alone. So you take the knowledge, internalize it, put it into your heart, think about it, and make a change. No one can make you to change, right? Or to do good, except Allah. And if you have just a little bit of a step, positive step toward Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be us. So it beginning with one of the terrible, one of the ill effects when a Muslim sin or commits a sin is number one. I will share just six or seven of that to complete, as I mentioned, as I promised, after Ramadan, inshallah. May Allah give us long life with Iman and Barakah and health and Afiyah. Amen. One of the ill effects of sinning, number one is Hirmanul Ilm. Number one is Hirmanul Ilm, meaning prevention from useful knowledge. Hirmanul Ilm in Nafi'a, losing useful and beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge is what is beneficial knowledge? It's uh, Primarily or ideally is ilm about Allah and about deen. And the scholars they add also any dunya ilm, any worldly science or knowledge that would make you conscious of Allah. And that's how Islam is a way of life, it's not just rituals. Because we have the treasures of science or knowledge, the sources of knowledge about the creation, not only in this world, but in the afterlife. It's in the Quran, the Holy Quran. Allah says, He taught Adam السلام, the names of everything. Anything Allah taught Adam, you know, the names about that. As He also taught the angels. But even the angels, they failed to give knowledge as Adam السلام, had. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave order to the angels to make sujood out of honoring Adam السلام, respecting the knowledge of Adam, or that the knowledge that Adam has. Coming back. So that's with regard to beneficial knowledge. It's a knowledge that will make you conscious, will bring a change to your life. So it doesn't mean if you maybe have a Quran from cover to cover, but you don't practice the knowledge, it will be argument against you. It will be something serious for whatever, even a piece of you know information or knowledge. By the way, it becomes the information becomes knowledge and becomes useful knowledge. So useful knowledge in a knowledge that makes you to change from bad to good. Number two, is a knowledge that elevates you. If we will, someone will come, the day of judgment, he memorizes a lot of knowledge. Ayat. We give him our signs, our verses, our miracles. If we will, Allah subhanahu could make you, by whatever knowledge you gain, or obtain to be elevated. That's when you are sincere and when you put that knowledge into action, even a little bit by the day. Imam al-Shafi, one of the founders of the third Madhab in Islam, Madhab School of Jurisprudence, he was a student of Imam Malik, by the way, um, and Imam Malik was amazed how this student you know, of, of knowledge, he's so intelligent, smart, his memory is charmed. He would cover the second face of the page, not to memorize both together. That's Imam Shafi. So Imam Malik, he said to him, he gave advice to him. Qala inni ara Allah. I see that Allah qad alqa fi qalbika nuran. Allah has thrown into your heart a light. The knowledge is light. That beneficial knowledge is light. Fala tutfi'uhu bi ghulmatil ma'asiyah. Don't extinguish that light by the darkness of sin. Subhanallah, there are, uh, that's why uh, some few, some couple of lines of poetry, they say they are attributed to Imam Shafi'i, others they say to Ali ibn Khushrum, uh, Khushrum. So whatever the lines say, beautiful words of wisdom. He said, Shakawtu ila wakihin suwahifri, fa'arshadani ila tarkin ma'asih. I complain to my Shaykh Waqiya, that I have, my memory became bad or weaker. You know, so, uh, the, the, the poet says, you know, whether Imam Shafi or others, or someone else, he says, he had a sin. It, it is said that he looked at 
just the uncle of a, of a, of a woman from the back. He, he, his memory became weaker, subhanAllah. And he went to his sheikh to say, شَكَوْتُ إِلَى وَقِعٍ سُوَحِفْظِ فَأَرْشَدَنِي إِلَى تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِ وَأَخْبَرَنِي بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُبْدَى لِعَاصِ I complained to my sheikh about the weakness of my memory, my memory. And he advised me to leave sins. And he told me that see that knowledge is a light from Allah and the light of Allah can never be granted or can never be gifted to a sinner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. So this is what we got with regard to number one. You know, whatever knowledge you know, whatever Quran you memorize, you have to be careful that sinning or continuing in sinning without making tawbah and fixing ourselves, you know, that knowledge will be lost for the end of and wouldn't be beneficial. Number two. Now, number two, one of them, uh, ill effects or the consequences of sinning. Very important for us to understand the topic that I am presenting today. One of the consequences of sinning is hirman or risk. This is number two. Hirman means loss or prevention of risk, sustenance. Either by the risk will be, there is no, someone will become jobless or less of barakah. Someone may have, you know, he does have good, you know, salary, standard living, good standard of life, but there's no barakah. What's wrong with this? What's, what's wrong with it? What's happening? Where is the barakah there? Someone may be just, you know, earning even, you know, one less than one quarter of my salary and they are living and unhappy and I'm getting you know, the, the, the triple of their salary and there is no happiness. This is, you know, mainly because of sinning. Mainly because of sinning. Because risk, you know, is also increased by Obeying Allah, by dhikr of Allah, by ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In al Muslim, one of the collections of hadith. Inna al abda la yuhram al dham bil rizq. Inna al abda la yuhram al rizq bil dham bi yusibu. Which means that a person is prevented from risk because of a sin that he or she commits. So this is not, number one is prevention of knowledge, useful knowledge. Number two is prevention of risk. Number three. Number three, Hirman al Ta'a. Hirman al Ta'a. And underline this. Hirman al Ta'a. Meaning, a person will miss to do good in the time that he or she is supposed to do good. A person will be prevented from obedience to Allah. Subhanallah. This is a, one of the severest punishments that a person could be punished through it. Maybe if someone went through an accident, but this is not a punishment. This is to punish, to purify him, or to elevate him in a status to make his connection with Allah stronger and stronger. But someone used to make good deed and he stopped. Someone used to memorize Quran and he stopped. Someone used to seek knowledge and he stopped. Someone used to give you charity and he stopped. Well, he had that, that primarily may be because of well, he had of sinning. Well, yeah, yeah. The scholars they say, "Inna al-'uqba, al-'uqba tisiyya, al-'uqba siyya tu ba'dha, ba'dha." The punishment of sin, it it develops another sin after it, and it's one of the signs, one of the indications that Allah accepted something good from you is that you will go, you will do good after. Amazing. How can you know? Everyone can be that. Your heart could be your your mufti. Your heart could be you, your mufti, give you fatwa, give you a verdict that you are doing good, right? You do good and you do another good after. That this is an indication that Allah accepted your previous good, a good day. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, and I need everyone, if you can memorize these words, if you can memorize the words, you know, these pearls, these beautiful, you know, statements of wisdom by one of the you know, legions of Islam, one of the beacons of Islam, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was one of the great companions of Sahaba, of the companions of Rasulullah. He said, Inna lil hasana la nuran fil wajh. Sorry, Inna lil hasana la tiyaan fil wajh, wa nuran fil qalb, wa sa'atan fil rizq, wa quwatan fil badan, wa mahabbatan fi qulub al He mentioned five things. 
five good things you will get if you do good. And he mentioned five bad things a person will go through if he does wrong and he doesn't fix or doesn't make Tawbah or Istighfar. Because we do have the solution before the punishment comes. And this is something amazing in Islam. You don't have to go to someone to confess your sin. You directly, immediately to Allah, Ya Allah, I remorse and I confess. I confess my sin. Ya Allah, I, I am weak. Ya Allah, I ask you protection, please forgive me. Allah must forgive you because that's what Allah says. Subhanallah, He loves to forgive. He is the most forgiving, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are also procedures that how can we get Allah to forgive us? I will conclude my talk about this, inshallah. So Imam Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, Indeed, for every good deed that you do, there is brightness in your face. Allah. This is something spiritual. You, it, you will feel it's physical um, as well. You will feel it physically. You will feel the appearance. People will feel it. SubhanAllah. May Allah grant us out of His nur, Ami, in our hearts and in our uh, faces, Ami. For Duk, when you do a good deed, you will find brightness in your face. Number two, you will find light in your heart. Light. Your heart is illuminated. You have guidance. You know where to go. You know what to do. You know, you have your priorities are clear. SubhanAllah. Light, you know, is a metaphor for guidance. Light in the heart. Number three, is uh, expansion in risk. Barakah, blessing in your risk. This is number three. I need everyone to think about this and put it on yourself. I put it on myself. Sa'atan for risk. Blessing in your risk. Number four. Number four. Is strength in your body. Health in your body. Barakah in your body. Subhanallah. A bodybuilder struggle to wake up for Fajr and maybe even you have some, some kind of diseases or illness and alhamdulillah you have the, the strength you know to wake up and to do it. This is from Allah. So this is number four. Number five is وَبُخْضًا فِي قُلُوبِ الْخَمْرِ أو مَحَبَّةً فِي قُلُوبِ الْخَمْرِ So the fifth good consequence or reward that you will get is love in the hearts of the people. SubhanAllah. The good people, by the way, or the slaves of Allah. So these are five good things. Let us think about the other five bad, five bad things. If we do if we do wrong and we don't make Tawbah, we don't make Istighfar. Number one is, what is that with that? Gloomness. You know, face is gloomy. You know, ظلمتن في الوجه, darkness. What is that with that? وظلمتن في القلب, and darkness in the heart. The heart is compressed. You don't, you know, you don't want to listen to anyone. You know, even your, your parents, even your beloved ones. So there is something stuck in the heart. This is because of singing. Number three is, number three is, there is no barakah, blessing in risk, in sustenance. Number four is, weakness, you know, in the body, weakness in the heart. Number five is, hate or hatred or disgust or contempt that people may look you know or may have toward you subhanallah even they don't know anything about you subhanallah so these are five verse in five may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding so number four my dear brothers number four my dear brothers and sisters and young ones number four that we have to by the way when i mentioned that this is ill effect if we do sin you need to think about the positive other side that if we don't do the bad if we do the good we will get the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number five is sinning committing sinning you know doing the wrong you know having the wrong direction or the wrong journey reduces life span meaning sinning does affect our life span. How many years we will live a life in obedience to Allah? And I will clarify that because it's interesting to get this point. What is exactly real life? The scholars they say real life is a life where your heart is alive. Meaning, for how many years you have been living, if your heart was dead, meaning you was this in a very you know different direction. 
from the deen of Allah and from steadfastness, you are not almost, you are not living. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are alive. They are amwat al ghayr They are physically alive, but they are dead. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. So the real life is the life of the heart. And the life of the heart will be alive when, when we are obeying Allah. On the day of judgment, a person will come and will be and will be crying out, crying there. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِهِ A person will come who was transgressing in this world, he will say, I would wish that I, I could have put forward something good for my life, for my life, real life, for my real life. Something will add, will contribute to my real life, real life in the hereafter, real life in obedience to Allah in this dunya. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned something beautiful, beautiful, amazing. When, you, when we, he mentions, whoever likes his risk to be expanded and his lifespan to be increased, let him join the ties of his kinship. Let him join the ties of his blood relatives. Allahu Akbar. Your brother, your sister, your parents, you know, your, your blood relations, you don't have double rights. You know, they are, uh, you know, relatives in faith and then blood relatives. If someone's parents or family are not Muslims, he does have one of the rights, which is blood relatives. And this is something amazing in Islam. You keep good company with them, but don't obey them in, in the bad things. I will conclude with this. I will conclude with this. SubhanAllah. Something that is severe, which is, Nabi Sallallahu mentioned that there is no swift punishment. When we do a sin, that there is a swift punishment in this world before the hereafter. What is this? Severing or cutting off blood relations. When someone cuts off his blood relations, there is a swift punishment that would be inflicted, would befall on him, you know, in this world before the hereafter, if he or she uh, did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last thing, one of the ill consequences of sinning, well, yeah, we learn, is Sinning does affect the life of the heart, which is modesty. Al Haya min Allah makes a person does not care. Makes a person, you know, Haya means shyness or bashfulness or a modesty, something that is almost missing in these days. Illa marahin Allah, except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except with His mercy. Right? Modesty, shyness before Allah and shyness before the creation of Allah, by the way. You know, in Islam, you could feel shy to do wrong from Allah and feel shy to do wrong before others. These days, people don't care, you know, doing the wrong before Allah, the Creator, and before even others. What is this? This is one of the severe consequences of sinning. And when the Sahaba asked, what is, what is exactly shyness or hayat, the, the Prophet ﷺ said, when you are careful, mindful of what your, or your eyes, what your brain and what it contains, your stomach and what it includes, and to be wise, remember your destination and remember the after. These are five things that I have mentioned. Inshallah, to another time, I continue this because this is, as I mentioned, this is the mixing of our hearts, something that will fix our hearts and our bodies, our souls, our connection with Allah and others. Prevention of knowledge, prevention of risk, prevention of disobedience, of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good deeds, um, uh, pre uh, prevent, uh, reducing in the, uh, the lifespan and then losing haya wa liyan bila aqul kul hada wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimina min kulli nabi fa astaghfiru inna huwa rafur rahim. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من آمن من النبي بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وحبيبنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله عباد الله إن الله أمركم بأمر عظيم بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى به ملائكته وثلث به عباده المؤمنين فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل 
وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد اللهم ارض عن صحابه نبيك ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابه اجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم استر عيوبنا اللهم فرج قلوبنا اللهم تولى امرنا اللهم ردنا الى دينك مردا جميلا علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم ارزقنا الحياء منك اللهم ارزقنا البركة والرزق، اللهم ارزقنا العلم النافع والعمل الصالح، اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك، اللهم اشف مرضانا، اللهم ارحم موتانا، اللهم عاف مبتلانا، اللهم انصر مظلومنا، اللهم بل... اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان، اللهم بلغنا رمضان، ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار، 